Hi, I'm Alsatia. I'm an alcoholic and a drug addict. I have been through this process as it's laid out in the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, a loving sponsor, people like you, meetings like this. Um, I still have a few amends to make that I am willing to make. Um, and I try to practice the 10, 11, and 12 to the best of my ability. Uh, thank you, Tina. Um, I do have to say I'm very nervous, <laughs> uh, very fearful right now. Um, but I, I knew when Tina asked me about five, six weeks ago that it, it was a long way out and I, I had some time. Um, but thank you. I, meetings humble me. And so every time I come here, I just, you know, I just want to thank you people. Um, uh, I just want to qualify a little bit. Um, I started drinking when I was uh, 12. I, I had a good spree between 12 and 39. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, there, there's a long, there's a long period of drinking there. Um, and and I, I wish I could say something got me here or got me to quit drinking, but not, nothing did. I, I ended up getting pregnant at 39. And I was more or less single, um, and I, I, I knew I had wanted to quit drinking. And so I used that opportunity to stay sober, but it, it only lasted as long as my will would take me, in, and we know how that works. Um, so um, I, I came from a good home. Um, I have two loving parents who just celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary. Um, neither of them drank. Um, I have a sister who doesn't drink alcohol. Um, I have aunts and uncles who don't drink alcohol. Um, but I, I have um, some aunts and alcohol, uh, some aunts and uncles that I don't even know. They live across the country from me, and they are the alcoholics. So, although they weren't part of my environment, I think uh, I had some of their genes somewhere along the way, and so. Um, I, I never really wanted to be a good kid. I, 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 was, I was the rebel. I was the one who nobody wanted their parents to hang out with. Um, I, I was that kid. And although if you looked at me from the outside, it looked you know, that as though I had it together. But you know, once I found alcohol, I loved it. I loved drinking. I loved sneaking out of my house. I, I loved the, the chase of it. I, I loved the, the confidence that it gave me when I drank. I, I loved all of it. Um, and then when drugs came, I loved all of those too. All of them. All of, all of them. Um, you know, fortunately, you know, I, I quit drugs before all the, you know, hardcore ones came out now. I'm so grateful for that. Um, but again, I really only am one drink away from being a, mm -hmm. one of them. You know, more, you know. Um, so uh, I, I married an alcoholic, um, although I didn't really know he was an alcoholic when I married him. But together, we spent 11 years of just drinking hard, um, drinking hard together. And I always gave him the ultimatums. I was like, well, if you quit drinking, then I'll quit drinking. But I never, you know, it really wasn't about that. Um, and he's still out there using today. Um, and, and that's okay. Um, but uh, I stayed married for 11 years, and then I thought when I left that relationship, things would get better, and they didn't, because then I got with someone who I asked for help. I said, I need help to quit drinking, and, and that help turned into control. Mm -hmm. And he tried to control my drinking, and then we know how that works. It was, oh. I went the opposite. I, I went full-fledged, sneaking around, um, hiding it, drinking and driving, uh, looking forward to going to, you know, if I was like, just for instance, I, I'll never forget this day, so I'll throw it out there. I, I had to go look for a new mattress at Rotman's. <laughs> and I said, I, I'll, be, I'll be busy after school for a few hours. And so my boyfriend was like, okay, he thinks I'm at Rotman's. <laughs> well, I was at Rotman's, but I had a huge 7-Eleven gulp, like filled with booze while I'm walking around looking for a mattress. How ridiculous is that? I mean, you're not even supposed to be drinking drinks in Rotman's. Like, it was just, you know, people, it didn't even have a cover on it. I'll never forget, like, I couldn't even find, I'd lost the cover, and I was like, F it, I'm going in. I had no cover, just a straw. It was just, you know, ridiculous. So, you know, little outings like that would give me 
a few hours away so I could sneak more booze. And it just, it became insanity. It was just insanity. And so, again, I just stayed there. I just, you know, I stayed in that rut of, uh, I'm not going to drink today. No, nope, I'm not going to drink today. And then I'd, I'd get out of work, and I, I happened to work next to a 7-Eleven and a package store. And so I would get out of work every day. I'm not going to drink today. But I'd go right to the 7-Eleven, and then I'd go right to the package store, and then I'd go home. And I'd have all these big ideas. Well, I'm going to do this when I get home, and I'm going to do this when I get home, and I'm going to break my leave. I did none of that. I did none. None. And so anyway, I did that for as long as I could. And then um, I had a, I, a, he pushed me into AA, and so I did a couple open book did a couple um, open AA meetings, and I started to go to this group in Southbridge, and they uh, read the 12 steps, um, but anybody could speak, and I, I never spoke. Um, and, then, uh, and then I got pregnant. And I, I used to pray, because I did have a God. Um, I used to pray, but I used to ask him for things, you know, like... Um, you know, I, I just had to pray. I just had to say, you know, this is either I'm either gonna I'm either gonna get pregnant and I'm gonna have a baby and I'm gonna go back to the way I was because I've ha I have children. I have two other children that never stopped me before, and, and for some reason I thought this time was gonna be different. Thought it was gonna be different. It wasn't different. I lasted about a year, and the obsession of alcohol because we learned that that we have an allergy to alcohol and we have obsessive thoughts and. I had all this will, and I was like, I can do that. I, can. I didn't do anything. Again, I started sneaking, you know, and once a year I would have at it, and I, I would do, I would just sneak, and I was just a liar, and I would just have to lie and make up lies and lies and lies and fear, fear of being caught, fear of, fear of having, you know, him smell alcohol on me, fear of my disappointing my children, fear of, you know, fear, fear, fear. I was just so fear. Fear, fear, I didn't even know that back then. I didn't know what it was called. And so, um, you know, I, I, you know, another seven-year shit, so, shit show till I got pregnant and I got pregnant. And then I was like, all right, so I, I made the decision to quit and I stayed sober. And then, and then I went back out and then I had a good friend um, say, why don't you come to Big Book Step Study meetings? And I was like, what's that? And, and she said, you know, just come, just come. She's like, I have a new sponsor and my sponsor says I have to start going to these meetings in Worcester and I want you to come with me. And they're liter the meeting was like four minutes away from my house. So I was like, all right, I'll go. And I, I, I went and I went, uh, on a Wednesday night, and I walked in there, and I don't remember what step. I hear people say, oh, they were on step. I wish I remembered what step we were on, but I don't. And uh, I just remember feeling, I left there feeling uh, good, hopeful, maybe. <laughs> like, I heard some people say some things, and so then I just, you know, come back, you know, just keep coming. And so I, I came back, and I came back, and I came back, and, you know, I just kept coming, and I, I don't remember if I, if, I, if I sat through a whole 12 steps, but I'm pretty sure I did. Um, and, and then I, I asked for a sponsor. I, I, I got the courage to ask for a sponsor, and um, I started this process. And uh, I haven't been on this side too long. Um, it, it's, and this is actually only my second time speaking in front of a group of people. Um, but I, I still feel that I can carry the message. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm still not comfortable with all the steps, but one that I can really relate to is this one, fear. I think everybody can relate to fear. Um, I just had some notes here. So um, I was instructed to make a list of my fears. Um, and it, they started off simple as some childhood fears, some basic spiders, um, you know, just <coughs> silly things. Um, and then some real ones, you know, dying, my children dying, um, you know, something happening to them, you know, um, losing my parents mm -hmm. because, you know, I just love my parents so much. And just, you know, all, the, all these fears, my parents are older now, my dad is 75 and it's just... It's real, it's real, and that, that fear is real. Um, 
but I will have to say when I was writing my fear list, um, I, I was my, my ex at the time, because I ended up getting rid of him. Um, he, he was toxic for my life. And um, I ended up getting rid of him. And at the time that I started to write this list, he actually had, had met a girl. And so when I looked at this list, um, or when I look at this list, some of the fears were, were based on that. Fear of him loving her more than he loved me. Uh, fear of my daughter loving her more than she loves me. You know, fear of her having a better relationship with my daughter because she's 20 years younger than me. Um, and, um, you know, fear of, fear of, you know, um, her having a baby with him. You know, what if? what if? What if they have a baby together? You know, a fear of them getting engaged or moving in together. Well, you know, as I sit here today, a lot of those things have come true. And I'm okay. Like, you know, it's like those, those, th those, uh, you know, the, you know, a good chunk of my fears came from, from that relationship. And, and I can honestly sit here today and say, uh, they came true. And Alsatia was okay. You know, and, and, and it's, you know, it's, it's just a miracle of this program. It, it really is. Um, so, uh, what else did I want to say? Um, so I was, I was instructed to make a list. Um, and then, uh, then you're instructed to, uh, when did it first start? You know, when did that fear first start? You have to think back, oh, when, when did I first start? Some of these, you know, forever. Always had that fear. Other people's opinions, always. No, right next to it. When did it start? Forever. No, I've always had the fear of other people's opinions. You know, or, or fear of not being good enough. Forever. You know, where, where do you write that? Forever. <laughs> Forever. Um, and so, and then, you know, how do I, how do I uh, participate in this? How do I participate in this fear? You know, how do I feed into this fear? What, what actions do I do to keep this fear alive? You know? Um, and, and, you know, a, a lot of those things, it was obsessing. I obsess about things. I, I, my obsessive thoughts will take over my brain. And, and, you know, you hear that in the halls, it's the sickness in, in your brain. It's not a drinking disease, it's a thinking disease. So you take, you take away the booze, but I still got to think about this stuff. And so, um, so you take a look at how do I participate in that? And, and then, you know, how do I manage these fears? How, how do I manage them? And then the best one of all is what, what, what would God want me to do? You know, well, well, God, you know, God, when I was writing this list, God wanted me to write down all these fears. You know, he wanted me to make this list. He wanted it to be authentic. And, and now what does he want me to do? Now, now he's like, I got you back. And see, they, they came true and, and you're okay. And some of these are still, you know, my parents are going to pass away. Mm. You know, and, and, you know, these things are going to happen. And I, you know, I have some dear friends that their parents have passed away in this program. And they're okay. You know, they're okay. They cry, and, and, but they're okay. And it's, you know, I'm going to be okay, too. <laughs> and so, um, um, so anyway, God, you know, now I look at fears as, as what, what would God want me to do? You know, and, and that's how I go into my fears now. And, and I, I try to say the fear step mm -hmm. or the fear prayer. Mm -hmm. um, I have a little card in my van, um, and, and I try to say it. It's right on, you know, the sick man's prayers on top helps. And then right below it is the fear the fear prayer, and I, I try to say that. Um, and uh, so, um, you know, it's funny, it, it came up in my memories on Facebook the other day that I had posted that um, it's written 365 times in the Bible, do not be afraid. And that's a message for every single day. There's one for every day, do not be afraid. And, um, you know, if there's one message I can leave with you, you know, um, that there, there's a few, you know, acronyms out there for, for fear. And, you know, you can either make the choice to, you know, say, fuck everything and run, or you can face everything and recover. And, um, you know, that choice is yours. So um, wherever you're at, keep coming. Thanks. Mm -hmm.